So, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> On this fine Sunday morning, I'm showing you the beautiful view, the beautiful sky out the window. So, uh, we could start this short Torah class today because Baruch Hashem, I have a bris. Let me turn this around. So, I showed you my view out the window. We're blessed, Baruch Hashem, on this fine Sunday morning. Let's appreciate the beautiful world Hashem has given us. And uh, let's put in some tzedakah. So we have some blessings over here from Hashem as we give the class. And our usual bracha on coffee. If you have your own coffee, go ahead. And I'm double checking that my mic is on. <laughs> Last week they started the class. Got to turn the mic on. So I think the mic is on. Give me a thumbs up if you could hear what I'm saying. And uh, class is a little earlier today. It's also going to be a short class because Baruch Hashem, I have to go to a bris. So that's wonderful. Always should be simchas. Let's start with a bracha. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sha'akol Niya Bidvaro. So today I just want to share a, a, uh, a Talmudic statement because we spoke about this yesterday. And the reason we spoke about this yesterday is because we are in the time, uh, the period of what's called the period of Svira, the counting of the Omer. Some of you are familiar, and some of you are listening are probably not familiar. But during this period of time, there is a, a, um, a level of national mourning that has its uh, expression in Jewish law uh, during this period of time that we don't do weddings, we don't do simchas, and other limitations uh, simchas meaning simchas with weddings, uh, with music, and so on. We don't listen to live music. Many don't listen even to recorded music. And, uh, and we don't buy new clothing. There's various laws in Jewish law that, of, 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 of laws of mourning that we uh, uh, observe during this period of time. And the reason for that is because it says during this period of time, 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva uh, passed away during a, during a uh, plague. And the Talmud says that the spiritual reason for why they passed away is because they did not have the proper respect for one another. We gave a class, I believe last year or two years ago, a little bit more in detail on this, on this, uh, on this, uh, <clears throat> period of time and the explanation of the Talmud. But today I want to discuss something else. But because it's a time when we mourn because of lack of unity, it's only proper that we should focus on uh, unity and uh, a, a insight in the Talmud that relates to uh, how to enhance Jewish unity. Um, <clears throat> so and this is also in line with uh, what Rashi says in this week's Parsha. In the Parsha that we just read, Parsha at Amor, we just read uh, various, as every Parsha entails and includes within it uh, various topics and, uh, and laws. And in this week's Parsha, we read a, also a whole section on Jewish holidays. And over there, it talks about the holiday of Shemini Atzeret. Shemini Atzeret is the eighth day of Sukkot, of when we sit in the Sukkah. Now, on the eighth day, it's referred to as Shmini Atzeret, and it's not just the eighth day of Sukkot. In fact, in many biblical laws, it's considered an independent holiday. So even though it follows Sukkot, let's say Passover, we had just now Passover, seven days of Passover. The Torah says the first day is like Shabbat, the last day of Shabbat, but it's all part of Passover. Shmini Atzeret is different, where although it has some connection to the Sukkot holiday, when we all sit in the Sukkot and the huts, but on Shmini Atzeret, itself we actually do not biblically sit in the sukkah and uh, it has its own uh, laws that defines it as a also and maybe primarily as an independent holiday now rashi over there in the parsha brings that why this additional holiday this eighth day of shmini atzeret passover is only seven days why this additional eighth day says rashi the following that <clears throat> mashal, it's a mashal to a king that had his son, the prince, over spending time with him. And on the last day before he was to, part, to depart, um, the king says, 
because you're going to be gone for so long, spend one more day with me. And the language that Rashi uses is kashe alai pridatchem. It is difficult for me, your separation. Um, on the straightforward shot, shot level, this means that God is saying it's difficult for me to part from you. And since Sukkot, the next biblical holiday is Passover, which is six months, sometimes even seven months away when it's a leap year. So therefore, God is saying it's very difficult for me, your departure. And uh, let's have one more day where we focus on, on spending quality time bonding. So the, the departure would be uh, <clears throat> maybe less difficult. But commentaries point out, the Rebbe talks about this, the language over here used is kashe alai pridatchem. It's difficult for me, your departure, more literally meaning the departure amongst yourselves, as opposed to our departure. In that case, the Hebrew should have been kashe alai pridatenu, our departure. Pridatchem means your departure. Commentaries point out, and the Rebbe, the Rebbe focuses on this, that what God is really saying is my concern is right now here in the holiday spirit of Sukkot and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, you, my children, have been united amongst each other. Now that you're parting from the holiness of Jerusalem uh, as people for the pilgrimage had to be in Jerusalem together and there's such a spirit of unity. Now that you're going to be traveling each to your own places, I am so worried, says God, about your separation, the disunity amongst yourselves. And <clears throat> so in the time that we are in now, this message of our unity and being one is so important as we know the Talmud tells us that when we are united in true unity, that's when we are victorious and we're able to overcome our enemies. So in that vein, I want to share the Gemara. The Gemara has a statement, and I want to give a little insight into the Gemara, also based on what it says in Hayom Yom. The Gemara says that, <coughs> uh, says a statement, there are many statements in the Talmud and directives. And the Talmud over here says, I'll say it in Hebrew, this is a statement in the first tractate, tractate Brachot, the tractate that deals with blessings. And over there, the Talmud says, Al yipater adam mechavero elam bitoch dvar halacha. A person should not part from his friend. In other words, when you're going to say goodbye to a friend, you should say goodbye mitoch dvar halacha by sharing a, a word of Torah. More specifically, halacha means Jewish law. And the Talmud says, Shmetoch kach zachreu, therefore his friend will remember him. So when saying goodbye, uh, in addition to all the kisses and hugs, etc., etc., make sure to also share Advar Halacha, and that's how you should say goodbye. Talmud goes on to discuss, and there's various insights that we could uh, share on this uh, piece of Talmud, but again, with the limitation of time, <coughs> um, we will share this one thought. Why specifically um, Advar Halacha? Why not any Torah? And why in general is it so necessary when you're saying goodbye to share a word of Torah? I mean, to share words of Torah is always a good thing. Why does the time, and not only that, the Talmud says, Al Yipater, a person should not part only. This seems to be sort of a, a negative language. Why doesn't the Talmud just say, say goodbye with Advar Halacha or Advar Torah, say goodbye with a word of Torah? What does it mean, do not say goodbye only with Advar Torah. Now, often the Talmud uses that style language to make a stronger point. Al Yipater, do not say goodbye only through. And by not following the directive, then, then don't do it. It's to underscore. We find this language and terminology used in the Talmud in many places. But comes Hasidic insight, gives us a little bit of a deeper insight over here. And this, what I'm sharing, is called from various places. So. The Hasidus gives a deeper insight and says, This is a statement into itself. A person has to know that you shall never depart from your friend. End. End of statement, period. And on a deeper level, on a soul connection, connection level, we are all one, as it says in Darizal and Zohar, that we are all part of one sort of... Uh, 
komash lema, one general gestalt. We are all essentially part of one general soul as we come from, from HaKadosh Baruch from God Almighty. So first the Talmud makes a statement, Al Yipater Adam Chavera, a person has to know that you are not departing from your friend. And you know how to achieve that on a more revealed actual level is Ela Mitoch Dvar Halacha, by sharing words of Torah in general. By sharing words of Torah, Torah, which is the blueprint for the creation of the world, which is God's wisdom, which is God's instructions to us. And not only is it an instruction or a manual guide, but it connects us to the giver of Torah. That's how you raise yourself up above the physical space that you might be separated from your friend but you're connecting on that soul spiritual level, which is beyond space, which space does not separate you from one another. Um, <clears throat> and even more uh, to why the Talmud uses halacha. Halacha is that part of Torah which deals with the practical uh, laws and rules of Torah, meaning that your study of Torah and that which you're departing for, uh, to your friend or sharing with your friend is not just some theoretical or lofty part of Torah, which is also a important part of Torah study, but it's, it's expression into day-to-day -day physical life, which means that the physical separation is imbued or inspired by that practical halacha that you shared, and therefore that <coughs> prevents the outer separation that seems to be uh, as a result of being in two different places on a physical material level. Now, to the Hayom Yom gives us further beautiful insight into this on a more spiritual sort of Hasidic uh, style level that a person should not depart from his friend. Halacha, which means Jewish law, is related to the word lalechet, lech lecha, Leilech, which means to travel, to move, to go forward. And here, the Hayom Yom gives us another beautiful, deeper insight. Al yipater adam mechavero, a person should not part from his friend. El mitoch tvar alacha, he should share with him something that causes and inspires his or her friend, la halacha, to truly um, move forward, to grow to increase. That's what halicha represents. You're moving from where you are in a positive way, of course. So <clears throat> that brings about true unity. Therefore, he will remember his friend. Meaning, true movement means real growth. Real growth. As the Rebbe once said to someone in a private, in, in, in a semi-private audience, that the sign that something is alive is that it grows. So here, in a very beautiful way, the Talmud is telling us that when you have to depart from a friend and you want <coughs> to have that uh, non-departure on, on a more inner, real level, al yipater, how do you achieve that? There's two points over here. One is that you share with him Torah, which unites beyond the physical space. Number two, three points. Number two, it should be specifically... Uh, include within it a dvar halacha, practical, uh, <clears throat> a practical aspect of Torah so that it affects the practical, what we call the real world. And number three, it should be something so Im impactful and inspiration that it causes the listener, the person you're departing from, to have true halicha, to grow from it. When you have that, you achieve a deeper inner unity. We're talking about unity over here. A unity which is beyond just that we find ourselves in, in our in, in the same space. A unity which is not just a superficial unity based on niceties. It's a deeper soul level unity that transcends and allows you to remain <coughs> united despite or even where the surrounding reality or at least physical reality says you're separated. So this is just a, a, a little insight into this beautiful short piece of Talmud 
that is apropos to share now in a time when we are supposed to focus more on unity amongst us, many dimensions and angles how to approach that. This is one more little insight sharing with you today as I'm rushing off to another beautiful unity event where we come together for a mitzvah, the mitzvah of bris, mazel tov to the family. May we only be able to talk about positive things and simchas. May Hashem grant protection and blessing to all those who are dealing with the challenging time that we're in now. But I'm Yisrael Chai. We have Hashem guiding and watching over our people and all good people throughout the world. Have a great and fantastic week.